Good morning, security fans, and welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada. We're here steaming through day two of Black Hat. My name is Savannah Peterson. Excited to be joined by John Furrier and a fabulous guest for this segment. But I got to ask you, John, are you loving are you loving Black Hat this week? I mean, the conversation has been great. We had the wide ranging set of conversations from experts, from companies making the news. Obviously, the funding is still hot, and we got more startups popping out. So, a lot of growth, a lot of companies' growth. Still, Lots of growth. A lot of product sprawl, but still, there's a lot of problems to solve. Yes. But it's it's a hot market. It is a super hot market, and who better to talk to us about that than Tarun, who's been on the show multiple times over the last ten years, serial sure. entrepreneur, total G. Very exciting news and and things going on at Vesa right now. We can't wait to hear all about them. How's the week been for you? Big week of announcements. Excellent. You know, it's 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 always good to be back at at conferences like Black Hat, where you get to meet so many customers and yeah. and and really sort of opine and and get their feedback and use that. But also, you know, just a lot of energy. You know, a lot, a of, lot of good show. energy in the show. And so, you know, though I would say I didn't realize Black Hat had grown into that size. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a very nerdy show too. You got a lot of technical people. CISOs yes. are here with their teams. So you got a lot of conversations Absolutely. In, in the product side. So yes. a lot of product technical technical, technical. product technical. conversations, not so much business transformation. Yeah, no, teams want to get into demos, teams want to talk about, you know, hey, can we see this in action, rather than just data sheets. <laughs> well, let's get into your company. Obviously, you're a serial entrepreneur. Your last company you sold the rubric. You've been in the space. You know data. Obviously, your, your background. What is this company's story about? What was the motivation four years ago to start this company? And, and give us the update. Now, the news was out the, this week on the funding extension, which are JP Morgan, congratulations. But great thank success. You, What's thank the motivation? You. What's the purpose? What's the mission? Yeah, no, thank you, John. That's a you know, question that we sort of keep front and center, which is, you know, why did we start this company? What was that insight and intuition? And you know, it was just when we were starting the company back in, in early 2020, you know, I, we were literally just going around with a piece of paper. And the question that I was asking and we were asking is like, look, if you think of what's top of mind when it comes to securing the most important asset in your organization, which is your data, employee data, customer data, third party data. And you know, this feedback that we were hearing is like, look, we, we operate in defense and depth. We have operated secured our endpoint, we secure our network, we secure our front door, but yet we haven't cracked this nut of principle of least privilege. And it's a little heavy term. So it's like, okay, what do you really mean by that? Yeah. Right. And, and explain that. You know, and so you know, we, we, we got this problem statement, John, back four years ago. Is like, look, I have every security tool with me. I still cannot answer this question. Who's Savannah and what can she delete in Snowflake? Or, or who's Joe and what can he delete in Salesforce? I, I, this is such a... It, 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 Standing on the outside, it sounds like so silly, but why is this such a complex challenge for businesses? Thank you, thank you for asking this question. And that's exactly what is our point of view. Is like, how can it be that this problem yeah, has I not mean, been cracked? It sounds cracked? like such a like obviously you're the painkiller in this situation, <laughs> but but <laughs> why is that so systemic? Yeah, no, so so uh, you know I think look, what has really happened over the last two decades, if you see, movement it started with this with the adoption of cloud, adoption of SaaS, and. Every time anybody gets access, John gets access to Salesforce, John gets access to Snowflake, he's essentially getting access through permissions and entitlements, mm -hmm. not really through his identity, right? And so, so you know, the, the principle of least privilege as we cracked, we have lived in the last two years, or last two decades, sorry, in this world of identity which was nothing but an active directory. Trees built on top of trees. Mm -hmm. John belongs to a group of finance, his role is a CFO. Well, that doesn't mean much. John yeah. gets access to Salesforce. John gets access to Clary. And he gets access through permissions and entitlements. Mm -hmm. And so our observation was that if you really want to go after the problem or principle of least privilege, which says you should get as minimal access as possible, that is rooted in ability to understand permissions and entitlements. Permissions enable access, <coughs> not necessarily your identity. That was the insight. How come we have not cracked the problem of who can take what action on what data? To intuition that in spite of it being a simple problem, nobody has really cracked understanding permissions at scale. Yeah. You know, you have access to 50 systems, Google Drive, Slack, mm -hmm. critical systems, and you have access, your identities across all those 50 so systems. So the fragmentation of privilege Correct. Mainly is the main issue. Correct. Databases are driving it. You're an entry in a database relative to that specific thing. That's exactly right. John has access to Oracle. And it's your privileges that allow you to perform certain actions. Talk about the, the why Gen AI highlights this problem and why it's needed. Because, um, you know, obviously we've been saying on the cube. When prior to your other company, we were talking about data as a as an operating principle. Data is everywhere now, and it's also run, kind of a runtime generative. Correct. Applications are going to generate 
a response, which means it's, it's not known. So data needs to be available. Correct. And then the app needs privilege. Correct. And then the person in and the, the app, is, is, that, is that right? That's exactly, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So you know, if you think of sort of why SaaS caused a lot of you know, uh, tailwinds, cloud caused a lot of tailwinds, and if you look at Gen AI now, right, these are all machine accounts, these are machine identities. If you think of an AI app or an open AI, that's nothing but a non-human, a machine identity. You spin, yeah. up a, spin up a compute instance in the cloud, and you want some, what is AI? At the end of the day, it's a three-legged stool. It's training data, it's compute, and it is the data that on which the training model is running. Mm -hmm. The compute is nothing but a non-human identity. And so AI is actually making the problem a lot more, lot more worse, uh, mm -hmm. and a lot more severe, if that makes sense. That totally does. So how does your announcement combat that? How does Access AI help that? Absolutely, you know, so what we announced, and we're very, very excited to announce, the, announce our, our, our sort of Access AI is what we're calling it, a brand new offering in our, in our product portfolio. Again, going back to the problem, Savannah, which is why did we start this company is, in spite of all the cyber tooling, mm -hmm. every week we hear a news about a breach yeah. and ransomware. For the first time ever in the last six months of 2024, a first billion dollar breach. Oof. The first billion dollar breach in our history happened this year, right? Mm -hmm. And the root of that is back to principle of lease. Organizations don't operate to principle of lost police privilege, right? We want to help organizations strive towards that. Yeah. And if we say, look, we want to help organizations strive towards principle of least privilege, then we have to go understand fragmentation of permissions and privileges spread all over the place. You cannot do that with humans. Mm -hmm. You need machines. You need computational models. You need algorithms. You need data set. So uh, what we've announced with Access AI is a set of chat GPT-like interface. Uh, you know, it's the most canonical thing that every all of us associate with. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we've announced, um, you know, with Access AI, essentially, now you have a capability, a chat GPT-like interface, a Gen AI-powered interface. You can ask a question on Visa control plane. What does Savannah, Savannah has access to in Nike? Mm -hmm. Imagine you having that capability, like a Google search, yeah. for your enterprise, who's John and what does he has access to in Snowflake? What can he delete in AWS? And this essentially is what we announced. And the second part of the Access AI announcement, Savannah, was around uh, you know, every day we need access to things. Mm -hmm. Go back to the AI. Open AI as a compute instance needs access to some data that it can run as a machine. That means you need access to a system and that access to the system is I need to recommend you a role. Mm -hmm. You know, the way we get access to Salesforce, I get associated to a role and that role gives me a set of privileges mm -hmm. that I can perform certain actions. Well, instead of human deciding what does Joan get associated with? Let Access AI define, and so we're calling it role recommendations, yeah. uh, you know, which is very powerful interface. So identity has been, always been a hot area, and the hackers have, have been uh, attacking that as a vector. It's been a big part of Correct. where hackers go after because of laziness of either uh, the companies or not knowing who has what. The person might have left the company or maybe they just ignored an update or whatever, given someone privilege, or they get in. How, is secure, how, do, how do you guys guarantee that security piece? Because this is going to come up a lot with CISOs. What's been the reaction? So you know, I, I love the idea, least question. privilege, if everyone does their homework, you start from the, the minimal position and then add it, you have intelligence and reasoning. What's the security posture for you? How do you give that confidence? Great question, great question, uh, John. And I think the, you know, look, identity, our point of view, so the second reason why we wanted to start the company is identity needs to go from IT specific function to a critical fabric of cybersecurity. And now the question is how? You know, how does Visa approach that, right? So the way we, we, we approach the topic of bringing identity to be a security posture centric is you start with that visibility, that intelligence layer, we call it access graph, identity graph, who's John and what can he go delete in Snowflake. Mm -hmm. We give you that visibility and then we help you understand is that access good, bad, ugly by a machine, by a set of critical findings. And then this, the, the way to bring it into the security context, like a SOC, or like a security engineering team, is you say, okay, that's my baseline. Mm -hmm. You know, my baseline is, Bill has read access to Salesforce. I want to define that baseline, I want to create a rules and set of policies around it. And if that access drifts, mm -hmm. it goes from read to write. It goes from read to delete. If a drift happens or a creep happens, you want to get notified to the security team that can take immediate action like an on-demand 
you know, let's say I report to John, I, I got my access go from read to write, John gets notified through Visa, yeah. through a webhook notification that, hey, one of your employees just got your access elevated. You may want to go validate that. And that's how you go into from visibility intelligence to remediation, monitoring, revocation. And that entire thing is about security engineering, security architecture. On the customer side, obviously your news, you got the uh, JP Morgan invested in you guys. Thank you. Which was that part of your last round, extension of the last round. Um, that's notable because you know they don't do a lot of investments, but obviously they must be a customer. I'm not just <laughs> assuming they're a customer if they're investing. Um, they're good. I mean, they have a great team over there. What's their reaction? What was their, why are they so excited to work with you? Can you share anecdotally or specifically how they approach this and what's been the outcome for them? No, I think, uh, thank you. First of all, you know, we're very grateful you know, uh, to, to, to partner with, with, with an organ iconic institution like JP Morgan because as you rightly said, John, there are customers and there are customers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there, you want to in this sort of first <laughs> seminal ages of the first four or five years of the company, you want to partner with organizations like the biggest bank in the world that can help you think about use cases that you're not even thinking about. So, so one, I think we got introduced to them about three years ago, really partnered with them on how we are thinking about this space. And you know, that kind of an organization is thinking about architecture, not speeds, feeds, features, right? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking about this problem for first principles? Visibility, intelligence, access graph, because they're all about yeah. innovation, right? Not me too. So uh, we partnered with them about three years ago, really worked very hard over the course of 24 months, as you can imagine, working with such an organization. Um, but you know, their primary use case was like, look, JP Morgan, uh, like an institution, is embracing cloud as they very openly talk and about. And they're doing least principle. Least privilege. Right? Least privilege, yeah. I'm sorry, least, priv yeah, least, least privilege, privilege uh, <clears throat> philosophy. They, they want to institute, uh, you know, top down, look, data is our most critical asset. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure as we move our data to the cloud, the least privilege access is maintained in the cloud, and that starts with who has access to what. Governing that access we were talking about before the session, I want to govern that access, I want to monitor that access, and I want to maintain that baseline and I want to maintain that baseline over a period of time. Yeah, I can imagine a lot of people do that. I'm looking at, <clears throat> speaking of customers, looking at the customers you have here on your website, Thank really you. across the spectrum. Everything from Mattel to we're here, we're here in Vegas, you've got the win as a customer. I mean, quite a lineup. Have you noticed adoption of Vesa is, is vertical specific? Is it really general? Good Who's question. jumping in first? You know, my, my view, as I shared with, with the teams internally, everybody is going to be needing Vesa over a period of time. Yeah. It's, it's just a matter of time. And so, but, but thanks for that, Savannah. We, we have customers across all three verticals, financials, healthcare, pharma, life sciences, big tech, mm -hmm. um, manufacturing, uh, and all the way, you know, what we call is internally is a bimodal go-to-market, meaning organizations in mid-market from 500 employees to 3,000 employees, and really enterprise when you go 3,000 employees and above. So I would say broad go-to-market adoption all the way from early stage to late stage organizations, commercial to enterprise to large enterprise, but also across lots of verticals uh, where you know all these customers care about the data that you have. Yeah, oh, and, uh, of course they do, and they've got a variety of data both on their employees as well as you know customers. Exactly right. Are they all an equal level of chaos and invisibility? Oh, I, it's such a good, such a good point. It's it's shocking, you know. Or the first look, our core innovation is around this concept, data model. We call it Visa Access Graph, mm -hmm. right? We turn it on. Let's say we turn it on for the cube, mm -hmm. and John will be able to see who's Bill and what can he do in Google Drive. When you see that graph, it's like something that you've it always humanizes. wanted. It's like somebody turned the lights on. Humanizes. I love that the word. The database, kind of like back office, kind of you know, tables and like schema, like, oh, yes. what? I, yeah. I always knew that somebody had access, but I never had a view to it, right? So that visibility, that 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 empowerment they get mm -hmm. by getting that visibility of who has access so to it. So I have to ask you on your, on your vision. Yeah, confidence, too, I feel I like. I mean, we were talking yesterday about, the, about how intelligent applications are going to need to have access to data and that data security has to be like traditionally built in from day one, governance right. and doing all this uh, uh, least pr uh, privilege. Stuck kind of stuff. So the question is, is that will it identify things I might need access to? Or do you see a future where apps can on the fly intelligently say, this person should have access or doesn't have access and give a notification? I love it, John. It takes me back to our 2016 days. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you're absolutely right. So look, the, the act one or act two about visibility intelligence starts there. You, you take it to the next level of actionability with remediation, revocation, and, and monitoring, to the earlier point of how do you take identity into security. 
but what's the North Star, right? What's the North Star mission, which is where you're going? And you know, the way we define the North Star is like, look, access request has to be built as an AI machine. I need access to something, the machine should say, Tarun should get access to this app through this least privileged role. Seamless, user friendly, and least privileged from day one. And that's our North Star. Can we take, and now why are we in that position to go achieve that North Star? Is because you've spent last four and a half years understanding the sprawl of permissions and the defragmentation of the permissions spread all over. And so you know, we recently launched State of Access as our first seminal report as a thought leadership. Mm -hmm. We have about 10 million identities in our graph now. And that just gives us that amount of data set to train, to understand, yeah. and then go recommend. I, to your point, yeah. I'm about to get access to something, I better get a least privilege access. And you're unifying through not a rip and replace, complete destruction and rebuilding of identity. You come in and offer the basis to kind of aggregate existing absolutely. systems. Yeah, That's I mean, an look, important point. Right, no, exactly, no, absolutely. You know, look, enterprises, as you, John, as you know from years, you know, for them to trust a startup to come and rip and replace day one, you're not going to make any <laughs> friends, right? And so you have to earn your right, yeah. you have to earn your respect. And so, you know, we start with, we started with, look, we'll come in as a complement to your existing tooling, where we'll give you the visibility intelligence. But it's become also very clear, John, given platformization, given pressures on macro headwinds, mm -hmm. you have to replace an existing budget line item. Yeah. And so, you know, what we realized as we went into this market, identity has three key pieces, access management, which is your ALA, Active Directory, or Ping, or Okta. Number two is your privilege access, which is like CyberArk or Beyond Trust or Delinea. And the third big pillar was IG, identity governance, SailPoint, Saviant. And so, you know, you go after the weakest, you know, we, we, we have a phenomenal product in next-gen IGA space. Uh, you know, we're winning a lot of, lot of good Fortune 100, Fortune 500 customers. Um, we use the framework something new, something old. Mm -hmm. Something new is that visibility that you have never had, mm -hmm. which you needed, mm -hmm. and use that as to go after the mundane business process of yeah. IGA, access reviews, access recertifications, yeah. joiner, mover, lever. I'm joining an organization, I better get access day one. Or I'm about to transition an organization, I should not, you as an organization should not have any access debt. Yeah. You know, yeah. because access debt will come and so you bite. make it easier. We, we, well, not only easier, but bringing AI to that, right? Exactly. You know, bringing, you know, of course, making, you know, if you want to go be a 10x to that existing product for an organization, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of readiness we feel in the market to go look at a modern IG solution. Mm -hmm. um, it was a great tool that was built over the last two decades for the era of Oracle. We are not in the era of Oracle. <laughs> We're in the era of SaaS and cloud and Gen AI. So. Well, great opportunity, obviously, the funding and the endorsement, Thank you, sir. the investment, Thank you. and then just the overall you, traction. It's a great market. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity and yeah, I mean, what interesting market timing. I just got a point out because we were calling out and I saw that he's your angel. Joe Montana is an investor. He cold DM'd you on LinkedIn. So you, you start from, from that level uh, at the earlier stages now to the biggest bank in the world participating. Who's your next dream investor? You know, time, time will tell, time will tell. But thank you so <laughs> much, thank spot, you, thank exactly. you so much. Thank you so much for saying that. No, Joe, bringing Joe on the, you know, as an investment team and the part of that extended yeah. team of Visa has been very humbling. Uh, you know, um, do you throw the ball around ever? Some days. <laughs> I gotta ask. I, I, I just feel I just feel humbled and privileged to have pick up the phone and have a conversation with him. You know, uh, but but thank you for saying that. And JP Morgan, going to be very grateful uh, for their trust and belief. Um, you know, these are iconic institutions that can help you build an enduring company. Is how I see it, right? Absolutely. If you want to go build something evergreen, if you want to build something enduring, you need such partners around you. And they, they uh, place will Joe very do some savvy celebrity bets. appearances on behalf of uh, like get this investment going. We want to go do. We're we happy want to, to go, do. We want to, I just want to come to the barbecue. We, we want to go do a company, yeah. company, company get together and have him come and meet. Yeah. You know, two hundred people and, and their families. Yeah. You know, what a, what a, what an event. So oh God, working on that. that. Yeah. Congratulations. Be Thank great. you. All Thank right. you so much. Uh, last question for you as we wrap up because we could talk all day. You're an absolute fantastic guest. What do you hope to be able to say when we have you on the show next time? Let's not make it six or seven years this time. Let's call it next year at Black Hat. What do you hope to be able to say then that you can't say now? It's a good question. Uh, good question, Savannah. You know, look, our, our, our North Star mission, right, I go back to customer love, customer ambition, customer obsession. Um, you know, be grateful to come back and say, you know, we went from JP Morgan to probably the top 10 banks, all of those banks, five years, 10 years, or, or a year from now. Hopefully not five years, but but I think that what gets me fired up, what gets me excited, is I think identity is a foundation of cybersecurity. 
Absolutely. And can we take this year and not let's not have John identity be a siloed function. Can we make identity in the hands of an app owner, in the mm -hmm. hands of a data owner, in the hands of a DevOps owner, rather than it being a siloed function within the sec security team? If we can democratize identity, where a Snowflake owner, a Salesforce owner, a open AI chat GPT owner can do least privilege, I think we have made a significant impact forward. I love Great. that. Well, we look forward to celebrating that. Yeah. And, thank you so much. And your newest celebrity <laughs> investor when you're, when you're on with us next time. Sure, thank, thank you so you. much for thank taking so the much time for the this opportunity. morning, John. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Fantastic questions. And thank all of you for tuning in wherever you might be on this beautiful rock. We're in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada at Black Hat. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for cybersecurity news.